I think I know what's wrong with it. It ain't got no gas in it. All right, day at my job. I'm only making this video because the truck's so nice, but uh, we've been going back and forth. This old customer, I think he had a problem, couldn't fix it, come bought a used motor from me, still couldn't fix the problem, and now it's got a crate motor and still hadn't fixed the problem. And it's so ironic because I just had issues with this, but uh, let me make the camera just check out the truck. I think it's got a fresh paint job. I'm sure he's gonna put different tires on there, but it's actually kind of dirty in the picture, you can't tell. Where you got that from? Oh, uh, yeah. It's a pretty nice truck, let's see. I think he's redid the insides too. That's not new carpet, that's pretty clean, but I believe those are redone. Man, this thing is nice. I don't know. I mean, you can't buy this stuff, can you? Looks new. Headliner's brand new. It's actually got the lights in there. Seat belts look new. Door panels look new. Pretty daggum clean truck. But, uh, he, like I said, he's had the trouble with it flooding. And I knew they put the motor in. Let me pop the hood. Like I said, we've been going back and forth on this truck, but he said he, it'll crank and run fine. It just floods when it's idling. And one of the, this is a Renix, of course. This vacuum line right here going into the throttle body. I have no idea why they put it there, but that's what runs the map sensor. So I thought that was the problem. But as soon as I heard it crank up, I was like, no way. I said, that Justin's Jeep was doing the exact same thing. And we uh, couldn't figure it out. Well, let me crank this truck first. It don't have no keys in it. I've never noticed. Come on, GoPro. It says four GM cars. I'm gonna have to try to enhance that. Uh, I don't know if it's got the clutch safety switch. So you hear it, it's just like, cranks up fine. Couldn't spot it. Well, as soon as he truck it up on the trailer, I was like, man. And he popped the hood. I seen this. You know. So, I don't know how. Let me go crank this other Jeep. Actually, let me pull up the shop. I ain't even no reason to pull it in the shop. Won't take two seconds to fix. I hope. I know y'all have seen this Jeep before. It's just a junky Jeep I use in the shop, but Justin was struggling with his Jeep. And I was like, just steal a throttle body off this Jeep. I thought it was TPS. And you can check the diagnostic code somehow, but I don't have a thing. I'm just, you've been around enough of them, you can figure them out. But like this one. Now it's gonna run right. Of course it's going to not going to act up on camera, but it was idling the exact same as that Comanche was. And this and I know for a fact the throttle position sensor is bad. Because like Justin, you had to crank it on the floor and that's what, uh, that's how I figured out as a TPS. So let me change that and we'll see what it does. So I've never seen one. This is what they normally have. They have a plug there and a plug there. Same thing. This one's just like that still bolts up the same and works the same, but I don't know if maybe this one is for the motor computer. This one's for the uh, transmission computer. I really don't know, honestly, but I hope this fixes it. Cause if not, I don't know what it's going to be. I honestly don't think it'd make a lick of difference, but I undid the battery. They say 30 seconds. I don't know. I've heard touching them together. I don't know, but we'll give it 30 seconds. All right, got it on there. Like I said, I hope like heck this fixes it because otherwise I don't really know as much as we've went through back and forth. Oh man. Same thing. Uh... Let me do some studying. All right, I ain't got it running right, but I did plug this one in and it won't run right, but it'll steady out. So, pretty sure the TPS is working because every time I do that, it changes. So, 
pretty sure that means that it'd be working. I'm gonna keep on digging. I did find this vacuum line. They had it shoved in way too far inside there. So didn't fix it, but it made it better. I don't know on these old ones, but I don't think the O2 sensor comes into play till it's like operating. But I started noticing as soon as you crank it up, it's missing before it even gets running. So starting to wonder maybe injectors or I'm gonna pull the plug and check them. I'm gonna see if there's any differentiation between all of them. I started not even to make this video. I'm so glad I did because this is really big. And I can't believe I remember this from, gosh, I was 18. It's like 23 years ago since I've seen this. Obviously the plugs are fouled. And I know GoPro won't let y'all see as good as I can see, but I noticed that one in six were more glazier, like wetter than the other two or four. And what it was, well, I can just show you as I'm talking. I had a Jeep that I put a, I put a Renix flywheel on a high output motor and I like to never figure that out. And I actually, I don't even remember, I think we swapped the entire motor before I figured it out. But uh, I don't know if y'all can see, that's the Jeep right there. So could be wrong, could be wrong. I can always be wrong, but I cannot believe I just remembered that. Well, let me go show you the flywheels. All right, so here you go. This is a Renix. Bolts up the same, obviously, but look at the holes. There's a bunch of them, a gap. And for whatever reason, they changed and went to like a four. I don't, I can't tell you why, but that, I can't wait to go check this because me and this guy have been going back and forth. He's going to be happy, relieved. I don't know if I'm going to fix it or let him have somebody else fix it. Can't find no way to see it. It's five speed and the, flex, the cover don't come off. I'm going to try to pop the starter off and see if we can just peek through that hole. All right, this video is making me look like an idiot. Uh, I checked it. It appears to be the right one. The only, the O2 sensor looks like it's not been unbolted. I just don't think it cranks up and uses the O2 sensor immediately. But before, always start simple. I'm gonna check the compression and just see where we're at on it. If you're ever working on a Renix one, pretty sure it's the green one in the middle. You can just unplug it, green wire. Uh, and then right here. I would shoot for more than 120 on a brand new motor, but maybe the rings just ain't set in yet. Let me check the rest of them. All right, so the front one, kind of weird, is 120. The rest of them was 150, 160. So I got a new theory, and I may have to go to Justin's shop to show y'all this. But I got to thinking that gray means made in China, so I'm going to start simple and go get a known good one. We'll start there. I don't want to overthink this, but okay. I'm going to put some fresh plugs in just so I know what's going on. I was doing some more studying on the plugs, and like I said, I don't even think one in six is firing. That still goes back to uh, my uh, theory about the fly flywheel or whatever. But, oh, let me see. Mm -hmm. That's a big fire. I don't know if it's firing at the right, wrong time, maybe? Let me try something else. I know this ain't a proper test, but in my opinion, it looks like it's firing early. Watch the spark and watch the pressure. Oh. It kind of looks like it's firing early to me. Uh, let me go show you what I'm talking about. All right, I tried something. Oh, uh, I got my phone out and I'll put it in the video probably right here. No, I won't. Uh, explain what I'm doing first. I slow mode the compression and the spark and number three was perfect and number one is like double sparking and firing early it's kind of weird i'll show you the video now So I still goes back to the wrong flex plate. Let me make a phone call. All right, I was hoping it's gonna be like a 10 minute video, but pretty interesting. I don't know where to go from here. Uh, I think we're fixing to go ride dirt bikes. So I'm gonna go think about it the entire time I'm riding dirt bikes and probably be tomorrow, I'll get back on it. All right, back on the truck here. 
and talked to the guy. The story is I was wrong. This is a different truck than the one he had. But the truck was running, driving, running great and lost oil pressure. Pretty sure he didn't, I know he didn't say it, but I think he said it slung a rod. So had another core motor, had it fully rebuilt. I'm pretty sure all the accessories off this, the original motor are on there. But I asked him, I was like, did you change the clutch? And he said, it's a brand new clutch and pressure plate. So, or not pressure plate, like flywheel. What do you call it? Like, yeah, I guess flywheel. So, well, I got one to show you. So I'm just thinking maybe cheap, bad casting. You know, these are all synced up with the crankshaft, phased, whatever you want to call it. It's a balance hole, by the way. So I don't know. It sucks. It's either that or the, let me go show you the chain real quick. Man, this could have worked out any better. He's actually got one sitting right here and I'm not going to roll it around because it's his motor. But you obviously line this up with this one down here. It's got a mark and it's, you see the green dots. It's 20 pins on this style of chain. And I'll find another one to show you, but there's a other one. I call that a transfer case chain. I don't know. It's, I'm sure there's a proper name, but I don't know it. But you can see how it's shaped. And the other one's shaped like a bicycle chain. Hold on. All right, so I can't sit them side by side. This is actually my 5.0 stroker build, waiting on some parts for it. But you can see that's like a bicycle chain there and the links are a whole lot bigger. So instead of 20, these measure out 15 links. So I guess it actually, well, that don't change the story. So I actually have seen that on a few occasions is somebody count the wrong links per chain and who knows who built that motor. So that's a, possibility so i don't know which one i'm gonna check first figure it out i went ahead and checked tdc just to make for sure for sure uh and it's right it's on one got it on top dead center and I'm trying to start simple i still think it's the flex plate but i've never seen one of these go bad but i know for a fact it's firing more than it should be so that's not right so i think like i said i'm gonna put some new plugs in it Put it all back together get it to where it run and i'm just gonna see what a timing light does that's what's weird is it's firing like a big spark and a minute spark so i don't know if timing light will pick it up but i'm trying to do baby steps where i do big steps all right i got a timing light on there uh new plug i have not cranked it maybe it'll crank always check fine speed Runs the exact same. Pretty consistent. I don't know if can see it. It's only gonna be hard to see with modern age technology. So we cut it off. This thing's killing me. Uh, known good map sensor. Same thing. You can unplug it. It obviously makes a difference. Plug it up a second, but. Uh, whole new computer. There's the old one. Same exact thing. I'm gonna keep digging. All right, I'm gonna pull the transmission out. I, it could be the harmonic or the chain, timing chain, but I just think it's the flex flywheel. And I'm gonna kick myself if it's not, but it's mechanic work. I had to get proof I ain't lifted it up yet. I'm starting to think it's more the timing chain. I drove it and well, all I did is pull it out there, turn it around, and kind of dump the clutch. It don't seem to have any power. I haven't drove it. Uh, I didn't want to hurt the brand new motor. But it's more work to do that, in my opinion. So I'm going to pull the transmission just to make sure. But I want to proof that uh, I didn't blah, 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 blah. Oh, me, I love mechanic work. If you could just literally get paid for your time, I wouldn't complain. But it's chasing these problems. And you can't charge for chasing all the problems. You can only charge for fixing the problem. It just... It's the way it is, but uh, not what I want to see. Factory flywheel. I'm going to take it off and uh, compare it against one that I know run good. I'm not the problem, but I'm here. So basically a clutch job looking for why it's running funky. So I'll let you know when I get them off. Uh, complete waste of time. Exact same. This is mine. This is his. There's gap, all the little dots. Gap, and it goes around. Gap, same gap. So I thought that was like a new one and I'm sure it's made in China and I've seen distributors where they make them in China and the little prongs, I don't know if you know on a 4.0, they're just not right and there's no way so you have to like cut them off. So I thought it's out of phase. 
this next is pull the timing chain cover off next chase luckily got all this in the way i think that bracket up there's got to come off for the fan so it's a job but it is what it is all right morning time that's what sucks justin's got a machine shop to turn that flywheel but currently i'm just trying to get the truck running i'm gonna put a transmission back in all right got everything bolted back up i hope this works i think i made an invention about forgot those i took a little uh, powder coating cap and put a pinhole and i hope my theory is that as you'll just gradually push it it'll let fluid out but not suck air back in I feel like that should be invented by now. I don't know. It may not. It may, I think it'll work. But oh, the one good thing about Cherokee is, especially this bumper, but you can put a puller and there's room in this frame, whatever they did right there. So that is one plus thing, but you got to pull all this off later. Crap off. <sighs> yeah, I got that bolt. So, yep, let me get that to part. My theory is that he, it's still all in one piece. So I want to say it is uh, he's probably used to timing uh, the new motors that have the busted pistons and they have the 20 pin. Whereas this one, they don't go bad as often. So I bet he's thinking that it's the new timing chain. I don't know, could be wrong. I've been wrong the entire video. So who knows? This thing is about to drive me insane. Uh, it's got the 20 pin chain. It's like the timing chain chain. Uh, looks good, everything. So, I went and got a crank sensor. I guess I gotta put it all back together. I may check TDC and uh, distributors, make sure nothing ain't freakishly out. I don't know, it's getting frustrating. This is a day three. All right, all the top dead center stuff that looks good. Uh, luckily it'll still run without all that mess on there. So maybe that'll help me out, but got to dreaming. I said, what if the old motor slung a rod and it's got something in the egr valve messed up so i think i'm gonna tackle that before crank sensor i just don't think it's a crank sensor issue it's just man this is frustrating about to take the day off before i go crazy oh egr valve why is there water in it i don't know but you can see right there it looks so stopped up it don't even look like it can flow but I don't know if I did it in the video. You can see scratch marks. I was like plunging it with a screwdriver and it was making it run different. But let me see if I can make a gasket just to cover this up and we'll just eliminate that issue. Probably ain't gonna fix it, but yeah. Eighth inch pipe thread plug. I believe we should be good. No EGR. All right, no EGR. Uh, don't really know what we changed. Give another try. No starter. All right, I had the starter undone where I was checking timing. Yep, exactly the same. I did hear something. It made me wonder. The fuel pump sounds like it's struggling. I wonder if the regulator stopped up. And that's what sucks. They've been working on it, so I assume all the basics have been checked. I kind of skipped over the basics, but I'm going to be, if that's all that's wrong with it. All right, of course, it runs the same. Uh, Y'all can't see. It's actually a little low, but it shouldn't be causing what we're dealing with. It's so weird that it runs good. It just won't, I don't know. Uh, let's try starting fluid. Get rid of no fuel. Alright, I'm glad I caught the camera. It's running on starting fluid. There's no fuel pressure. It's still not running smooth. As I was going to lunch, I started thinking, I was like, I still... I went against the crank sensor, but I'm starting to lean to that maybe it got broke in the motor swap. I've seen it. I don't know why I'm avoiding that. It just don't seem like a crank sensor issue. So I went and got one. At this point, just try anything, legit anything. So this is number six. It's not as bad. 
and this is number three or four. It's just simply charred over. That's just so weird, because it's, it's running on starting fluid, which should burn clean. Like, I've been running. I know that's probably why the plug's black, but wow. This is getting so frustrating. Uh, used coal, made no difference. Used crank sensor, made no difference. Seemed like there's something else I tried. Air intake temperature sensor. I unplugged it and it made no difference. I I know if you cross the wires out or this goes out, it'll make it, it'll go to default, which is like either zero or negative 40, which would throw more fuel at it, but I got my fingers crossed. Going to get one. All right, there's that one. You can tell it's pretty charry. I went and got another one. Looks a little cleaner. Kind of got my hopes up. I went ahead and grabbed another one and two O2 sensors. I, like I said, I know O2 sensors control it, but I just don't think they control it within a few seconds of its startup. I think it's closed or open loop, whatever they call it. So I'm gonna barely screw that in and I hope, my, hope it works. It acts like it's gonna try and then it gives you a, a laugh in the face. This is unbelievable. The O2 sensor and the block temperature sensor is the only thing left. And what I just told you, the O2, but the block sensor, I've never seen one that's not broke. Every one of these Renix ones. They just put a high idle screw on it and call it good. Goodness gracious. May try to buy this truck, see if I can get LS swap it. All right, obviously this is the one I come out of it. I kind of touched it. Obviously it's black. This one's, I don't know if this one's a new one. It sucks, that one says made in America. It says auto light, but made in USA. I don't know. Oh. There's, I forgot about that's a temperature sensor for the block, but like I said, I can unplug it, it shouldn't even matter. I don't know if that's a knock sensor or what. That's the one I've never actually seen. Uh oh, I don't know if I was blocking y'all or not, but I don't, I've never seen one of them not broke. So, uh, I figured it's a knock sensor. This is the last thing. I don't, unless it's a wiring harness. I'm gonna try it. I feel like this is that show prank or whatever. O2 sensor made, uh, not a lick of difference. I got thinking the only thing left is the distributor. Uh, I've never seen one do this, but hold on. Change the whole distributor. I don't think that's it. Hope it is. That's that's the last thing that bolts to the motor. I hadn't changed injectors. I got the starter on did. I hadn't changed injectors, but I run it on nothing but pure starting fluid with the exact same results. So that's what I'm starting to wonder if this ain't something to do with a lifter pumping up while it's running. I don't know, I hate pointing fingers, but I'm running out of options here. Every time it runs the exact same. It's almost like the lifter pump up when it's running, it's not making compression. some digging. I'm gonna see if I can pinpoint a direct miss because the number one plug is still, it's like clean. The rest of them smoked out black and it has lower compression. Usually a compression will make it on the first hit. The first one's like 90, 100, 110 and it stops at 120. Some of the rest of them were like 160, 180. So it's kind of weird. I've just about quit filming. I about lost motivation on this thing. It's been working. Give or take, I don't know, three hours. I got the valve covers off. I've, well, you can watch the injectors. I think. They're squirting plenty of fuel. I've checked them with an injector checker. Oh, uh, I think the motor, I think a lifter's pumping up and holding it open and because number one and number six, this is number one, right? Like it's just clean. So it's getting fuel. I know it's getting fuel and it's getting spark. I'm sitting here watching it spark and I've used a test light. It's firing when it should. Only thing left is compression. So I know the motor's brand new. So I mean that, I mean, yes, it's brand new. That don't mean it's always good. Parts fail. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. Uh, 
I tried, I don't know if I did it earlier, I'd run the whole vehicle on starting fluid. That didn't work, and starting fluid's more flammable. So if it was compression, it might have run a little better. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna try to buy the truck. Maybe I got some sort of lead going on. Okay, so as it's running, like this is a middle plug here, number four. I mean, I've been showing you these, the front one's like a washed. It, uh, I don't think it's getting compression. It's firing because I can watch it fire through this uh, thing here I broke. But it's firing, which means it's firing the plug. Common sense stuff there. Uh, I checked the noid light. It's telling the injector to fire. I even spun it over with injectors in the air. It's spraying fuel. So I know that for a fact. Also have run it on starting fluid. That's my next step. I got a dummy rail here if I do it. But the big kicker is, is the exhaust. I can touch it the whole time it's running. So my theory is, is Justin can explain it better. It's the lifters don't have a proper tolerances. So when it pumps up or cranks up, it's pumping lifter up just to, enough to bypass the valve. And I think it must be blowing back an intake, fooling a map sensor, throwing a whole lot of fuel. It's weird, but see if it'll cooperate on camera. Watch the first few hits. It should be like, always, Pretty much impossible to film it but the more you spin it over it pumps up oil and it starts making less compression each time you do it and this is what 50 rpms hold on pretty random for this video but uh all right let me do some more digging all right so what i've done i've took little washers and put under the rocker arms and it made more compression on the thing. So this one I just left loose in number six. And I hope the plugs ain't fouled out so bad it won't run. Like since I started this video, this is one, it's absolutely black. So I got dummy rail here, no fuel, it's unplugged. I don't, it may drip a drop or something, but I uh, got my rag and I'm going to try to run it on pure starting fluid. And then I'm gonna check the, uh, the temperature on the thing uh exhaust and c so let me get that set up all right i hope this works so bad uh. all right i'm gonna try one more time i've got a throttle blade cracked open a little bit Oh, god dang it, I had the coal unplugged so I didn't get started fire. <laughs> so I had the coal undone when I was doing injectors just to cancel out any form of fire. So see where we're at now. So yeah, that's that. That's the hottest it's been the entire video. It's 202. The hottest I've seen it's like 112. Oh really? So just that short period of hand. So it's making it's making combustion now. It's making combustion now. I don't. I was hoping to fix it in this video. Actually, I was hoping for like a seven-minute video. This got out of hand. So I don't know. I think I'm gonna put it back together and I guess lose a bunch of money on it. I went ahead and pulled the plugs. That one was brand new. Still looks good. This one's number four. It's got just a little haze on it, but so I, I talked to Justin, that's so what he said. Just put it, all the fuel system back together and just let it tap and just see if it'll run better. And we'll go from there. 
All right, I've got all the rocker arms loosened up. Uh, well, I said I did. Maybe on a stroke, but I'm gonna at least loosen the nut or bolt. I wanna see what it does. Should be back on normal fuel. I think everything's hooked up. Dang starter wire. I guess I'll crank it out here. Uh, I've got to plug the coil up. I had it in case I want to turn it off. Sounds like it's just got a small miss. cylinder now. Two pieces. Wasn't making any heat before. This thing. So confusing. Alright, let me turn it off before it catch on fire. I mean, that's the best it's run since since the video started. So I'm sure those plugs are about blacked over. Alright, well it's not the results I wanted but it does the results is uh what i wanted to hear pretty sure y'all been along the ride since i've changed every sensor but i've loosened all the rocker arms and it's hard to get them right i don't know what's going on exactly i know the plugs are probably about fouled out but here in just a second i had it purring like a kitten so uh Pretty sure I said it, just said it, but I know the plug's got to be charred over. But he said just a second ago it was purring. It's got a little smoke, but it ain't doing that crap no more. So, oh, uh, gotta keep putting it together. But ain't nothing. I'm I'm not gonna do nothing because that's a brand new motor, and it just shouldn't be like that. But. All right, got it all back together. Go go back to the customer, and that's one thing I do remember saying that the brakes felt horrible and that makes sense now because the lifter is pumping up and it's shooting that in shooting the combustion air back into the intake which cancels out your vacuum brakes so i'm going to try to drive it i don't think they've even tried to drive it because it's a brand new motor and they're scared there's nothing i can do because it's not my motor so i don't know what to do it's crazy i had the valve cover off and i noticed it shot a little plumb over the hood landed up there and run down huh? i don't know if that's a good or a bad thing i think i know what's wrong with it it ain't got no gas in it makes it out the top of the driveway i'll get back with you in here in a second runs and drives fine it's just that slow speed of at low rpm it has time for the gas the cylinder gas to get past the valve but at a higher RPM, it don't have time, so it actually runs right. So it's eventually going to burn a valve. So I don't know what the guy's going to do. I kind of hate the way this video worked out, but if you've watched this far, I do appreciate this. has been an awful frustrating three days for me. And I probably won't charge him a dime because I ain't technically fixed nothing. So I got to get back to work. Appreciate y'all.